of the Morning Show here on Arise News. Nigeria's former president, Chief Olusha Gumabasanjo, is not a stranger to being the focus of public discourse. And in time past, he has provoked quite a number of widespread reactions, particularly regarding the state of the nation. The former president has been known to author several open letters to his predecessors in office, detailing his concern and position about issues of national importance and never failing to offer solutions each time. These contributions are usually subject to diverse interpretations, but for a man who prides himself uh, on being a staunch believer in the Nigerian project, such public criticism has always seemed to propel him to engage in more open communication with the powers that be. On Thursday last week, Chief Obasanjo seized the opportunity of a speaking platform in Abuja to tell President Muhammadu Buhari what a bad job his government has done with keeping Nigeria peaceful, development-driven, and safe for Nigerians. Joining us now to offer a perspective on the issues raised by the former president is Akin Oshuntokun, one-time political advisor to Chief Olusha Gnobasanjo, political strategist, scientist, researcher, administrator, a journalist, and also a writer with vast experience in media advocacy, policy research and implementation, and political analysis. Welcome to the program. Akin Oshuntokun, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? How are you, my brother? Akin, what are you doing in Cardiff? You are supposed to be a fellow at the University of Oxford. Has the program ended? Huh? Oh, yes, you... yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, the program yes, is over. Yes. Okay, so... It's ended, uh, it ended um, a week ago. Ah, a week ago. Okay, so now that you are back home in Cardiff, uh, nine months' time, you invite us, right? <laughs> <laughs> to a naming ceremony. <laughs> no, no, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for British Airways to give me a day. To give me a day so when I will return to Nigeria. Anyway, to the business of the day. Um, you must have uh, been following the story. Your former boss is now being described as divider in chief of Nigeria. I'm referring to Chief Fulusha Gumabasanjo, uh, who made a statement about how Nigeria is drifting. And uh, now there is need for the leaders of Nigeria to come together to see how Nigeria can be saved. Would you agree that, in a sense, uh, the uh, government of Nigeria is uh, right uh, to say that uh, President Obasanjo is trying to divide the country? Well, you know, the day anyone starts uh, describing Obasanjo as divider in chief, divider in chief in Nigeria. Uh, then the Nigeria, uh, Nigeria is finished. You know, look, you you know him, and you know his disposition towards Nigeria. If somebody, I don't know anybody in Nigeria before now, and until now, who qualifies uh, as the, you know the foremost Nigerian nationalist. You know, he is, he is when you talk about the tribalized Nigeria. You know, you'll find that in him. I mean, you know, you even know the attitude of his, uh, you know, uh, ethnic nationality towards him on account of, uh, you know, his Pakistan's uh, commitment to, to, the, to Nigerian unity at the expense of being seen or pandering to, you know, uh, to the Yoruba people. And but like, look, it's a Trumpian uh, joke for. For 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 Buhari to describe Obasanjo as, as a divider in chief, it was a Trumpian, Trumpian joke. You know, you know, Trumpian joke is uh, what you are guilty of. You know, you start projecting it on the other person. There has been no president of Nigeria who qualifies as divider in chief more than this president. And you know, you can just look at the at the credential. You know, this is the first time in the history of Nigeria where you have the head of the three organs of government, you know, coming from the same corner, from the same, you know, uh, constituency, Muslim North. He is from uh, Katsina. Uh, the, the chief judge, Justice, is from Bauti. And the head of the chairman of the National Assembly, who is the Senate president, is from your state. 
Now, look at the security services or the most important other services in Nigeria. You have the Inspector General of Police of Kano. You have uh, the, of, uh, the Director General of SSS from Kano as well. You have the Chief of Staff as well from, 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 from Bono. as the Advisor from Bono as well. You have uh, the chief of uh, Yasta. Look, I mean, you can go on and on, on and on and on and on, you know, but so it's funny and it's ironic that, you know, you find somebody like Wari accusing another person of being the murder. That is a trademark of his government. Is that is his calling, that is calling cat. I mean, it's so funny. I mean, it will have been, you know, it will have been funny, it will have not so tragic. Well, this is the record of uh, Mr. Buhari, and that is why you have, you know, the kind of crisis that you have in Nigeria. We see the idea that, um, uh, you know, some kingdom, you know, reach for political kingdom first, and all that things will be added on to you. The problem of Nigeria really is political mismanagement. You know, that is the, the, the root cause of, you know, political Management, of course, you know, involves taking into consideration how you mobilize your people, you know, to confront challenges. You know, challenges will always come, you know, to any nation or to any individual. It's your capacity to grapple with those challenges that matter. Look, if you mobilize Nigeria, look at during the war time. Look at what our Lord did with the economy of Nigeria. You know, all you need when you are confronted with the society, you know, is the capacity to mobilize people. And, uh, and on the contrary, this almost corresponds corresponds to and, in, and, and the worst it gets, you know, on which you have a situation in which the president actively divides the country. There is nothing that you can have other than crisis and the kind of failure you know, that has afflicted Well, it looks like okay. there's a problem with the connection okay. there. Um, Akan Shintokun, can you still hear us? I can hear you very well, okay. but I can... The picture I can see is that of Obasanjo and Buhari. Yeah, okay. I don't know what that is. We can see you clearly now. We can see you clearly. You are back on the screen. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, you know, I was saying that, look, uh, projecting Obasanjo as divider in chief, I mean, there's something like, I mean, it, it, it parallels the kind of allegation that, you know, Americans make against uh, their president. You know, we all know, apart from that, we all know the pedigree of, of Wari. When you were with uh, President Jonathan, you know, was he not talking about dogs and baboon, you know, uh, soaking in blood or something like that? You know, that the attack on Bokwara was an attack on the North? You know, you know, he, 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 he as a former president, he went to, to a real state to, to confront the governor there that, uh, you know, he... Is there, you know, on the on behalf of his people against against uh, you know the other people? So you know, if somebody, uh, I don't know why they are laying themselves out to the, the most vulnerable aspect uh, on which that is the most vulnerable aspect of Buhari's government. Of course, is division. So I'm surprised that they will open themselves up to you know, open themselves to attack in this manner. You know, that he, he, I mean, it is, it's, it's anybody, you worry, worry accusing another person of uh, division, it's almost self, uh, you know, it's self, you know, uh, flagellating, you know, you, you are the one deliberately, you know, opening, your, opening up yourself at your weakest point, you know, uh, for attack. So, but as I said, and again, the moment somebody like Obasan just starts talking about the way he's talking, the way he's describing the reality of Nigeria, people should stop. People should start worrying. 
you know, about the capacity of Nigeria to endure. Okay. I don't know any Nigerian today. If you know any other one, you can tell me Mr. who qualifies. Oh. Yeah. Your point exactly is the argument of the presidency to say, you know, pre uh, former president, uh, Chief Olusegun Basanjo, is critical of everybody except, except himself and his administration when he should have laid the foundation, you know, for the Nigeria he's describing. They argue that, you know, he paints himself a saint and every other person has done wrong. That's their argument here. Well, you know, I, I just saw, you know, you are a young lady. I don't know how old you are in 2007. That's, uh, that's how many years ago, 13 years ago. 13 years ago, when Obasanjo left as president, you can ask Ruben, you know, who should know, his, you know what Nigeria was in two, 2007 compared to what, what it is now. I mean, this is... I mean, yeah, you must have seen people or hear people talking, saying that Nigeria has never been this divided. You know, I mean, so, yeah, if you want to contrast or compare Obasanjo with Buhari, or you are just laying Buhari open for, there has been no person, there has been no Nigeria, no Nigerian political leader, and I'm challenging anybody there with you, who has done more for the unity of Nigeria than, than Obasanjo? If anybody, if you can mention one person who had done that, please let me know. You know, I was in the government, I was political advisor in 2007. And again, as I said, you can ask people around, you know, about about the, you know, you know, you know the, 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 the competence of Basanjo or his record, you know, in terms of unifying the country. Look at what, in the areas on which we are um, uh, talking about, uh, even the appointments, the lopsidedness, the clannishness, the insularity, you compare the, 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 you know, the fair representation of appointments under Obasanjo to, to worry, and you get the point. You know, under him, you know, uh, Chief Justice Uwais was the chief of, uh, was the Chief Justice of Nigeria. The National Assembly, there were three president, uh, Senate presidents of four that related to all of them from the southeast, not from the Yoruba. And of course, you can look at the chief of Amistad, you know, who was from Kaduna State, Chief Martins, uh, well, sorry, General Martins Agwe, uh, National Security Advisor, Aliu Guzo, who is from uh, uh, Zamfara. And on and on, the Secretary of the Government, who is from uh, Ekaite, who is from uh, Akwa Ibom State, the IG of Police. So, look, that's what I'm saying. There is nobody, you know, at this, so I don't know <laughs> how much you are, but what you have just said is the strongest point of, 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 of Obasanjo. And the record is that if anybody is qualified, mm. you know, to assess, you know, the, 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 the standard of uh, the incumbent president, you know, uh, in terms of uniting the country, Obasanjo is the one. You know, you can go and, uh, uh, you know, compliment what you know about him, you know, with just have, what I've just told you. Well, it's, you a good, see him it's a good thing that it's not my age that has been debated okay. here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but I wanted to know, how old were you in 2007? It's, it's not so, my age that has so, been debated so, here. So let's, let's go to the issues, no, really. See, no, I think, so why I said that, why I said that was that, Anybody, you are obviously not as. Uh, I you do know, understand uh, the point, Mr. Okay. Oshitoko. Okay. But again, it's not my age that has been debated. Okay. And these are the, these are, no these are the arguments being put forward. Okay. Uh, in fact, if, I, if I'm to ask that, sorry to reply. Uh, if, you know, he was such a believer of Nigeria, as you put it, another question is. He's breaking ranks with the same person he pushed and backed and brought to power. So why are you so being critical of him in the open when you practically shoved him down everybody's throat to say, this was the man, this was the man to bring change to the country? Well, you know, he owes the allegiance to Nigeria over and above any individual. You know, you have just, one of the points you are making I actually, you know, spent me, you know, the argument for for Barcelona. I mean, if you help him, 
is installing a person, installing a president, and the president gets there and he starts, you know, performing failure, you know, driving Nigeria, you know, and Nigeria is considered a first state now, and actually ranks number 14, you know, on the uh, first, first, first state uh, index. So what you are saying about you, know, that was good now. I mean, how many people in 2014, um, 2014-15, you know, there are many people who made the mistake of supporting Guarina, you know, but supporting somebody to get a, to get to a position is different from how the person now conducts in that them there. As a matter of fact, those who promoted him to that to that, to that position should be the first to call him out. You know when he's going, when he's doing wrong, or when he's going, you know, astray, and that is what uh, Obasanjo has done. So again, and see, and this is why I mentioned your age was that thirty years ago, you can obviously not be as conscious, I mean, conscious of public affairs as you are today. You know, so and uh, so I can excuse any that. And the reason I say so is that in two thousand and seven, Nigeria unity was. You know, uh, obvious to everybody, it was uh, the potential for there was high. You know, so you cannot compare in 2007 to what we have now. You know, there is a tragic uh, degeneration in all aspects of governance. The most conspicuous area of degeneration is uh, the political mismanagement, you know, the divisiveness, the deliberate divisiveness. You know, and I've, I, I've, I've, I gave you a sketch, you know, that, look, the three organs of government, that is the most primary area of governance in any country. Judiciary, the executive, and the, and the legislature. In the history of Nigeria, there has been no time where you have the occupants of those positions coming from the same constituency as we have now. You know, all of, all, all of them now, and from the corner, Buhari himself has the head of the executive, Lawan uh, from Yube as the head of the parliament, the chairman of the parliament, and uh, Tanko Yakasai as chief justice of Nigeria. That has never happened before. On those questions, you can establish uh, who is right and who is wrong. Okay. Uh, one of the rebuttals also, uh, they are quick to say about the Obasanjo administration now, because it's so funny the way we operate in this country. It's now away from the issues, but it's now cherry picking on what you did in your administration or the other. That's the way Nigeria runs practically. Is the 16 billion US dollars on power projects. I mean, what's your take in that? Because in all of this conversation, they, if you want to use the word mounted, they have mounted the, the case of, you know, that too, uh, as regards, you know, pushing it to the other side to say, okay, these are the things too, the wrong with your administration, which is not supposed to be the case, which I, I don't know terribly enough because we're deviating from the issues said about national cohesion and unity. But I'll bring that point forward. What do you think about that? Well, you are wrong. Again, this is what I'm saying. You should ascertain your points before you make them. I don't know what you mean by $16 billion. You don't parrot whatever you see any around now. Obasanjo has given an adequate account of himself. He did not spare There was nothing in that neighborhood. And if you, if you want to know, I will tell you now. What happened was that the recorded expenditure from uh, 1999 to 2007, that salaries and all the things in the Ministry of Power was bundled with the capital investment in power to come to the ridiculous figure of $16 billion. All what the person they expended on, on power was not more than $6 billion, and they adequately expend, at times you can see them, it was in the NIPP, you know. Uh, I don't know, can you hear me? Can, yes, I we can see hear you, although we, we okay, lost the uh, I, visual. Yeah, you know, so it was not more than $6 billion. So look, that's why I said that, look, you need to ascertain the points you want to make before you make it. And I don't know what you mean by cherry picking. You are the one who asked me about the question to which I responded to. 
I was not the one who said I wanted to talk about national unity. So you are the one cherry picking, not me. No, no, that but wasn't intended for you. I totally apologize. It's, it's apparent you didn't get my flow of thought. I'm saying I'm on both parties, they are you cherry are not, picking are on not, issues to talk about. That wasn't like for you at all. You I must have to tell you, sir. Guys, you didn't ask me about 16. If you ask me about the color wash, there is nothing like $16 billion. And thank you, you for the clarification. I'd like to thank you for the clarification, exactly. sir. Exactly. So, you know, so, so, so we got this wrong from there. Well, uh, 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 Basho no Shutoku, one question many Nigerians ask each time uh, President Obasanjo intervenes. They ask the question, what does Baba want again? They say he has been president. Why doesn't he leave his successors alone to carry on? And he can just stay in the background as statesman and father of the nation. And people say, look, this letter writing, you know, all the time, uh, should you, it's not something that, uh, you know, many people are happy with. Can Baba just enjoy his retirement uh, in peace? Well, you know, silence is, silence is complicity. And as a Yoruba person, I will also give you a proverb to back that up. But if you it will be criminally irresponsible of him to stay aside and see things going this wrong. Especially you recall that that is what said he was instrumental to get him there. So again, Ruben, so that that, that sums up my you know response to anybody who is saying that. Any any responsible Nigeria statement today who is not who has chosen to keep quiet about what is going on cannot be rightly described as somebody who loves this country. So silence, as I said, is complicity. I mean, what does he need to do? Will you be if something is going wrong? Will you want that the thing that was going wrong for someone to point it out, or you want or you want to ignore it, leave it and let it fester, and then the, and await the consequences? So you see, again, it's a non-issue. This kind of uh, uh, arguments are, are about you know why? Should, I mean, again, the contrary is the case. Right? If things are going wrong as an elder, where you are, you hold the responsibility to speak out. And as I said, especially if you are instrumental in getting the person there. And of course, the degree of degeneration of Nigeria today is so deep, is so precipitous that anything can happen. I just told you now, Nigeria is number 14 on failed state index. Is number three on global terrorism index. In corruption, is that uh, so? You see, how do you keep quiet with this kind of statistics? You are driving the country into debt beyond the day. About the that that you are talking about, got paid up after getting a large sum cancelled uh, of Nigeria's accumulated debt in 2006, paid it up. Now, this government, within its five years in office, has gone ahead, you know, to, to accumulate as much debt as you can put, I mean, putting all the 16 years of PDP together and more. You know, so you see, I don't know, again, I, I okay. you know, uh, the consequences of not speaking now, you know, is a greater tragedy. I had lying, I had, it's one, it's one, one of the few people whose voice is respected nationally and internationally. Okay, Bachelor Shudoku, if you could just uh, yeah. hold on uh, for a second. I would like to bring into this conversation the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and uh, Publicity, Malam Garuba uh, who is going to join us. Uh, so just uh, stay with us. Uh, hold on. We'd like to have the views of Malam Garuba Shew. Malam Garuba good morning, and thank you for joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you, Robin, and I'm sorry we have to Yes, good morning. I'm sure you've been listening to uh, Akin Oshuntoko, and he, you know, was uh, saying that contrary to what you said, that uh, President Obasanjo is a divider-in-chief in Nigeria, that in fact, the truth of the matter is that it is uh, President Buhari who is the divider-in-chief in Nigeria, and he drew attention to the fact about you know, appointments and how the president has handled so far uh, matters of national interest. What's your reaction to that point? Oshuntoku is listening to you, by the way, he's watching. Well, uh, I 
think Nigerians have uh, held Obasan Joe in high esteem and expected uh, uh, good examples to him uh, for all time. I think the question Mr. Oshunto Kun should answer at this time is, what was Mr. Obasan Joe's uh, opinion of Afeni Ferry when he was in power? What was his opinion of Ohanese when he was in power? We are talking about a degeneracy of sorts. This is man who held himself as a messiah, who held the key to the nation's problems, and knew the dangers of ethnicity and tribalism. Today, Obasanjo Sati is the convener of meeting of ethnic tribal groups. What are we talking about? If genuinely he intended to cause changes on policy, wanted to influence government, he has always had access. And he did that to good effect. Why would he not do that? But you know, it's typical of him. I have heard the last bit of Mr. Oshunto discussion. Obasan Joe never attacked government at the point of its strength. He looked for the moment of weakness. He had done this, he did this with Shahu Shagari, with the Buhari administrative head of state, with the President Babangida administrative ruler, with the, every one of them, Mori uh, Aradua, Jonathan, who did he spare? No. He looked for the moment when he saw you as being in, in, in a point that you can be destabilized. He chooses the moment at the, and he launches an attack. No, he's not well known. And this is sad for the country. Uh, uh, Mr. Gabashel, uh, some people will be wondering what exactly is the problem uh, with the statement here? Is it the person making the statement? Is it the statement itself? Or what you have just described as, you know, choosing when to attack or when to make the statements at the lowest ebbs and not praising this administration. So what exactly is it? What do you have a problem with here? This, we have a problem with all of the things you have itemized. Mm. But let me just give you one example. President Obasan Joe supported and funded National Assembly Constitutional Review Process. Of course, he had a basis, he had a reason for wanting to as it turned out, at the end of the process, he wanted to subvert the tenure system instituted by the Constitution. And that thing failed. Now, the fact that it failed does not in any way presuppose or right, does not make it a law that subsequent governments cannot make constitutional amendments. It failed. Now, for, for whatever people will say of the Eighth Assembly, under President Buhari's watch, the National Assembly amended the Constitution to give independence and, and financial autonomy to state assemblies and the local councils, which means that it can be done. And there are bigger issues to confront. And the National Assembly is saying to Nigerians, hello, Nigerians, come, let's amend the Constitution, bring your request. In fact, two days ago, Deputy Senate President was saying, bring requests for state creation. And Mr. Obasanjo is joining is joining fringe groups saying that don't go. Abba, this is sabotage. This is not opposition. Abba. Right. Uh, but but uh, Mr. Garbacho, if you read his statement to the end, there was a point where he called for unity and prefer solutions to the problems and the challenges. Uh, the part where he talked about us coming together to be able to solve the challenges we face as regards insecurity. Is that not state manly for you? Exactly. What, what we are saying is that, isn't it ironic that the man who is calling for unity and inclusivity and all of that, he was, he was the convener of a meeting of fringe groups, divisive groups, the group that they have, they have avowed the downfall of Wari administration. This are the group is meeting. And he wants to be taken seriously. The National Assembly, that, that's the, that is where the sovereignty of Nigerians resides. 
If anybody is serious about changing constitution or whatever, be a Democrat, go to National Assembly and use the institutional processes that democracy has put in place and cause changes that we desire. Well, um, Garuba Show, many Nigerians are of the view that part of the problem with this uh, administration is that the administration does not want any criticism at all, wherever it is coming from, whether it is from President Obasanjo or it's from the uh, Nigerian Economic Summit Group, that what the or international rating agencies, uh, and that there is, seems to be there seems to be a culture of intolerance to alternative views. How do you respond to that? On the contrary, because there is that, that is that commitment to the free freedom of fellow Nigerians to hold contrary views. That is why, that is why, that is why you, you will read the press and you begin to wonder whether, in fact, it is the same country you live in. All manner of Fringe groups, views distorted and quote contorted are paid. And I'm surprised people will say there is lack of tolerance because as we speak now, there is not one single litigation going on against a Nigerian medium of information, radio, TV, or newspaper. There is not a single journalist that this government has held for expressing views that are contrary to their own. I think that that should be a basis for criticism. And that basic criticism is to make things better. And to that extent, perhaps President Muhammad Bari will pass as the most tolerant leader this country has had. We have had leaders of this country who had uh, shut down newspapers, who had seized copies on the street, who had, uh, who had uh, locked up people in detention. No, this government does not go against contrary and they are welcome. All we are saying is that if you hold the view that, that democracy is the way to go, democracy has institutional structures for problem solving. Use them. Don't, don't call for sovereign conference on, on the market square. Are you, going to, are you going to call people to bring the, the clubs and the swords so that they fight on the street? That should be avoided. Okay, for clarity, I mean, you have emphasized the groups present at the event where this statement was made by the former president. Should he have called the president directly and told him this? Should he have written another letter? Would the response of the presidency uh, be different? And also, uh, what is your response to those who say, former president did not say Nigeria is a failed state, you know, and like Rufai has emphasized, he did call for unity. He says, you know, all hands need to be on deck. So don't you think that the response of the presidency itself is the one hitting the polity? As the former president didn't wish, you know, to attack uh, President Muhammad Buhari's administration. If uh, he wanted all hands to be on deck, he would have called for all hands to be present. We're talking about the peculiarity of the kind of groups he called to his meeting. Their views are well known, even before you, they speak. You know that their position on Buhari is well defined on this administration. So therefore, constructively, if anybody wanted to be of that benefit to the nation. Look, President uh, Mr. Obasanjo is a member of the National Council of States. It's a constitutional body. Please, did you ever ask him why he was... President absent at the last meeting when all the look at General Gowan's speech, look at uh, President Babangida and his uh, medical condition, Chonakan, Chief Chonakan and his medical condition. All of them, including General Abdul Salami, Abu Bakr, and President Jonathan. What happened with the they sent they sent uh, telecom people our uh, our IT they set up with uh, his laptop and the readiness for the conversation which was digital. We, we still are unaware of what happened. We want to know. So please, uh, 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 I think that there is access to this gentleman. He has used it in the past. Whatever reason, I don't know. It's still available, which is the position of which known to the Nigerian president. 
All right. Uh, while you were speaking, uh, Mr. Garbasho, you talked about the fact that uh, nobody, you know, no media house have been slammed, you know, as regards speaking or having dissenting views. But only recently, a, a Nigeria-based group in the UK of professionals called Fatherland Group, you know, issued a statement about the case of Obadiah Melafia. What do you say about that? Well, well, Mr. Melafia's case is a law and order issue. And uh, what did they ask him to do? He asked, he, he raised a serious allegation against a, a generic group of people. What is wrong in inviting him to ask that he should now, of the 19 northern state governors, uh, and uh, 16 of them, I believe, Muslims, who is the sponsor of Boko, commander of Boko Haram? It's a simple question. Shouldn't he be asked? It's in the, for the interest of the country, for our safety. We have a whole governor who is commander of Boko Haram. Shouldn't we know that person? We need to know. So he's uh, still a uh, camera. He needs to talk. Well, Madam Garuba Show, thank you very much for joining us. But before we go, we'd like to go back to uh, Chief Akin Oshintoku in Cardiff, Wales, in the United Kingdom, uh, just to react to some of the points that you have raised. Uh, Akin Oshintoku, are you still with us? Oh, yes, I am. Okay, you listen to Malam Garuba show, and uh, he tried to respond to uh, some of the points you, you raised. Um, do you feel convinced that uh, he has been able to justify the position of the federal government with regard to uh, President Obasanjo's latest intervention? Well, I don't know. I mean, well, if he's doing his job, so I mean, even if he's presenting what you call your alternative facts or alternative reality, what Obasanjo has said is not different from what, if you look at the Nigerian newspapers, if you look at other opinion leaders, anybody is saying the same thing about. I mean, you don't even need to look too far. He was talking about a government that the governments before have blocked the journalists. Uh, they have banned news. That's we was worried quite far as that for that in 1984, 85. That was what he did. So you see, so he just carrying on uh, in that uh, in that respect. But look, it's almost I feel perplexed when you hear this stuff. You know, people making up this kind of story about Buhari. I mean, it is obvious. It's so obvious that you really don't need to to argue about it. I mean, can everybody be wrong and you are the only person who is right? Can anybody honestly and with the fear of God say this present government of Buhari has not, you know, a deepened divisions in this country by his attitude, my, you know, appointment by signal? In it? Look, they've just brought back again this water resources bill. Remember that they brought Ruga, what the Ruga a while ago. So, look, in any, from any perspective, you look at this government. That it, it is so obvious that you wonder what, how can this be in contention? I've just told you somebody, something that is unprecedented and that any government or president seeking the unity of this country should not should go all out of his way to ensure it doesn't happen. And that is the three organs of government. Right? This is the first time in the history of Nigeria you know, where you are the head of those three, three governments, and that is the most prominent, that, and, and that is the thing that, you know, uh, is common to all aspects of his administration. You know, this persistent clannishness, parochialism, and of course, you know, it then becomes double geopardy. You know, when we, you, you see this kind of, you know, degeneration, and then the governance itself is incompetent. You know, if there's no there's lack of competence in what it does. If 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 you are discriminatory, if you are partisan, if you are parochial, but and you but you can deliver, you know, on governance very measurables, people will not be talking. But you are deeply division uh, almost on a daily basis, and on top of that, partly because of that, you know, uh, you know that method of governance. Things are not going right. I'm sure that uh, Garubasha will also listen to you. And other Nigerians will join the conversation, of course. Uh, 
now and uh, subsequently.